This lesson covers how to generate a unit step response using STEP or RL tool in MATLAB. The unit step response is the output of the closed loop system, so we're going to generate the closed loop transfer function when the input to that system is the unit step function. So let's build our system. G equals TF 1, 1, 1, 4, 5. That's G, H equals TF, 1, 10, there's H, and KRL equals 5. All right, so the closed loop transfer function equals feedback, KRL times G and then H is in the feedback loop. All right, that's the closed loop transfer function with KRL equal five and G and H as given. Let's type help step. Scroll on up here. Step response of a linear time invariant model plots the step response. All right, for uh, okay. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, so we just put the step, the system in. So it's just step, closed loop transfer function. And there's a step response. It's a time-based output. So it's doing all the inverse Laplace transform stuff for us. It's given us basically the controlled output as a function of time, uh, given all this stuff, the G and the H we put in, in Laplace, it's gonna output the time response. So here's the output. We can add things like the rise time. You can click on that blue circle. It'll tell you what the rise time is. We can add the peak response. Click on that guy. It'll tell us that the peak amplitude is 0.649. The overshoot's 29.8%, and it occurred at a time value of 0.334 seconds. You can also add settling time. There's a settling time, 2.1 seconds. 2% 2 criteria is the default. And finally, we can do the steady state value. Final value is 0 0.5. So all the step response is there, um, and you're good to go. All right, let's try using RL tool. This time, I'm earlier I set KRL equal to 5, but I want to go in RL tool because I want to see how the system, how maybe the step response changes as I vary KRL from zero to infinity. So let's build uh, the open loop transfer function. Transfer function equals series of G and H. And let's do RL tool of the open loop transfer function and see what happens. All right, we have our uh, our root locus here and we can move this pink box right it defaults to KRL equal one and then as we move the pink box it's it'll tell us what the K KRL value is to get us the closed loop holes where we want but what I want to do here is analysis do response to step command it's going to give us another window so I can put these windows side by side and right now it has a green response and a blue response if I right click and go to systems the blue one is R to Y which is one I want the green one is R to U that may be interesting in a different application or a different lesson so I'm gonna go ahead and close that one there's the step response we really want so the cool thing about this is I can move uh, KRL and move the location of closed loop poles and it will automatically update how the step response changes let's do that See that as I move KRL, it's going to warp the step response so I can see exactly what's happening. I can come up here, do the same thing. Move that up and down. If it goes off the scale, just let go. It'll, it'll recalibrate this, the Y scale and you can continue on with your design and continue to move this guy up and down. All right, we can also, just like we did before, put on some of the characteristics, rise time. Go ahead and put the value there. Let's put the peak response and put the value there. 
All right, same thing. I can come back here now and move, and it's going to auto-calculate the rise time and the peak response as I change the location of the closed loop pole. When I'm satisfied, I used a, a KRL of 1.89. Again, I can put my grid here and see what the damping ratio and natural frequencies are, or I can see that it's 0 0.93 for the damping ratio and natural frequency of 6.69 and the KRL value to get that there was 1.89 and this would be the corresponding step response to that controller.